Hey guys, here we are again. So I thought, you know, the rock thing again. So looking at rocks and looking at gold and thinking in terms of what happens when rivers happen, it is important to understand a concept called a streamline. It's a big phrase. It's a simple term meaning the path that water takes in a given flow pattern. And I'll get into that in a minute. But I thought it was kind of interesting last night, you know, got quite a response from you guys about fault lines. Well, let's follow that up with what happens with the water flow. So looking at water flow, one of the important things we need to know is how does a stream drive gold into what's called a gold lead or a gold path or a gold streak or also known as a pay streak. So one of the things that goes on there is a thing called a streamline. And so tonight we're going to talk about that a bit and reflect on the impact on your search for gold. Put my rock away. So let's make sure we got everybody on board and that we're getting through and transmitting to our Facebook check here. We're alive now and there's eight of you already. Two comets and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> I hear my own sound, so I'm good. Bob Sheasley, hey, how you doing? And William Nobby from, he doesn't say. Howdy, Jess, howdy, William. So we're good to go. I'm gonna turn down the volume on this thing. We now got 14 people, see we're climbing fast. I've noticed uh, we're starting to get more people watching, especially as we're starting to do more diverse things that relate to how to find gold, and we got more cooking, uh, a whole lot more. So. For now, let's talk about streamlines and gold leads and how that affects your gold prospecting. So tonight, <clears throat> we're bringing this whole thing to you with gold and water as the theme. And so, of course, 2020 is, is the report that talks about how water flow affects gold and its motion. It's one piece of it. There's more. But uh, and we'll be talking about a more detailed piece tonight. But that covers a generic picture of where gold gets driven by water and what it is that goes on so you get gold vision the 2020 concept so check it out it's a cheap uh, intro report so you can look it up and see what it has to offer for you in the respect of understanding water flow and gold and the path it takes so let's go back and look at streamlines and gold leads so when we're looking at our sluice box we're seeing the path that goes through and how water and the flow basically drops the material out as it goes through the sluice box. And you can see that going through this from the beginning to end. You kind of see the water flow here, the way it blurs this fog of mud and dirt. And then that distributes itself down. And notice the particles as they distribute, including big ones, which kind of get stuck. Okay, that's because of velocity changes. So what's happening here is the water velocity is the driving factor in moving objects in a stream or a streamline. And so what I'm going to talk about right now is a narrow view of what goes on there. And I have a picture that I'd like to share with you. It's kind of cool. Uh, something I ran into, and you can look up this article too while you're at it, on uh, Wikipedia. And let's pop the picture open. So what's neat about it is it has this really dynamic picture. Now what's going on here? Well, the the red, is, red line represents a particle. So imagine this is your rock with gold entrained or it's a piece of gold and it's in this flow now the flow is represented by all those dashed lines and whatnot and what we're looking at here is the path that that particle takes when it's acted on with a steady stream of water and so what it's doing is this follows a particular curve called a streamline the streamline de defines the actual trajectory think of it as uh, well like in rockets or or rock throwing or football when an object is thrown gravity in that case takes effect in this case water flow takes effect and puts a force on that object and changes it over time it's steering it along this streamline the water flow is and that is where the gold is going to go it's not going to go in a straight line it's not going to go straight down it's not going to go straight back it's not going to go out of the water it's following where the water moves it and this picture depicts that simple movement. And you begin to see that with a continuous flow, 
the gold particle doesn't follow a straight line at all. It follows this curve. Now there's another line that, that basically follows what would be if there were a particle released at any point along this, like a, uh, in the case of mud coming off of this object, uh, those particles would follow this blue line, which is called a streak line. Essentially, they're going to follow a more linear kind of picture that goes along with the flow more straightforward. The other one is the streamline. It's the line that, that, that this thing is going to flow along. So it's a family of curves that are instantaneously, that is at any instant in time, they're tangent to the water flow, okay? So, so what have, a tangent to the velocity vector, okay? So they basically go in the same direction as, as the fastest part of that part of the flow. So you notice when you have eddies, the thing changes direction. That's because the velocity changes. When that velocity changes, that direction that it's going to flow in changes along with it, kind of like uh, a fish or kind of like, uh, you know, dropping a stick in the stream and you watch where your, or your bobber and you watch where that bobber flows, it's going to flow into this area being driven by the fastest flow first to the slowest flow last. And that's the important thing to recognize here. The, the path that it takes or the path line is, is a product of that velocity, okay? And so uh, this is a little more complex concept here, three-dimensionally. You can have these, these streamlines stretch out in 3D. So the picture shown above is a simple two-dimensional picture, but in 3D is really what's going on in a stream. And so you have to kind of start visualizing that when something goes in, the thing that moves it directs it one direction. But as that, as that changes speed up and down the column or side to side in the stream, your object, your gold, is going to be deposited or going to move through that. Now remember, if it's in a flood flow, it's following a lot of mud and gravel, kind of like a giant cement mixer. So it doesn't get a chance to go right to the bottom. It can't. It would have to go through rocks to do that. So what it does is it bounces around between the different rocks and between all the mud and finds its way down there on average. So it's following a statistically driven particle flow that follows these streamlines. That's the velocity driven aspect. So all I'm trying to show you here is it's the speed that drives your gold. Keep that in mind. You'll see that come into play later. I'm not going to talk about it tonight, but later when we talk about gold traps, and we talk about various things having to do with speed drops, gold drops. Um, but for right now, I just want to kind of hitch on this topic of speed and streamlines. Because once you begin to visualize how a streamline works, and one real simple way that's shown right here is get some water, flowing water, and drop in a little ball of mud or a little bit of dirt, just release it at one point and watch where the dirt flows. Watch what happens, where it swirls, where it goes. It's going to go in the direction of the fastest flow. So you keep your eye on that. We talked about a method the other day talking about attaching a lead weight to a float and letting that drip, you know, go down that same flow. It's the same concept. We're just looking at the streamlines and how to visualize them. So in this case, we would be visualizing the three-dimensional flow by releasing some dirt or something at the level where we want to, you know, kind of care about and see what happens, see where the stuff goes. Uh, you can't really release anything like dyes or inks. That's for scientists who do research on ecology. <clears throat> but, and you wouldn't want to anyway because it just attract too much attention. But you can release all the dirt you want as long as it's, you know, from within the river. And so that's the idea is just make sure you, you track what you're doing and follow these flows and look for where it speeds up, where it slows down. Where it speeds up, that's going to be driving bigger gold. Where it slows down, that's going to drop out the first chunks of big gold. And if it slows down a lot, like into a little tiny eddy, that's where the finest stuff will settle the most. It'll all tend to get driven into that little pocket where it's constantly in agitation, then finally settles as the river goes down from flood. And so that's kind of tonight's topic. Uh, let me make sure, make sure I didn't lose you all in this process of understanding water flow, streamlines, and gold leads. Like I said, a gold lead is simply the line that the gold stacks up in where there's a high probability of finding gold along that line. 
Uh, it doesn't mean there's a line of gold. It doesn't mean that there is that there's a constant pile of gold. It means that that's the that's the point where you have the most gold stacked up along that line. Okay, and that is what drives it is this streamline. It's kind of all tied together. That's uh, hey Jess, Queensland, Australia. Great, welcome, Byron Brown. I'm here, uh, Peter. Uh, we got we got another person. Queensland, Australia. Great. So, uh, Brooke Edwards is watching. And we have, uh, and we have a cast of people here right now. So, so if there are any questions with regard to this, this is kind of a complicated thought. And so I don't want to go too deep into it right now. Uh, I could easily get into calculus and a bunch of stuff that'll just, you know, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about what that means. What it means is, the water speed drives the gold. What you can do with it or why you want to know it is that will determine where the gold is going to land when it goes down and what kinds of things you're looking for, like speed reducers, okay, or speed increasers or, or blockages in the flow that cause streamlines to bend. Streamlines aren't necessarily lines. They can bend around corners based on that velocity. So if there's an object in the flow and it slows the flow down or causes it to turn a corner, when it does that, it will change its velocity and that will tend to, if it slows it, drop gold. If it speeds it, pull gold out, send it downstream further. It's that simple a principle, but the streamline is the thing that drives it. The difficulty is a lot of people think it's way, that's a, oh, that's too hard a concept to understand. Not, not really. Talk to any fisherman when, you know, when you talk to him, how to run the spinners and how to handle fly, fly lines and, and so forth in, in turbulent waters where you're getting a lot of mixing going on, they can give you an into it onto the streamlines that are involved there. Just ask them where their lure is going to go. It's going to follow the streamlines. Okay. Uh, so go fishing guys, go fishing. Bob Sheasley. Thanks again. You're welcome. So, so that's kind of the quick tip for the night. I just wanted to talk on streamlines a little bit and get into this concept uh, and show you that cool little picture. You might want to look at the article. Don't let it blow you away. The one I just brought up uh, on streamlines. Uh, it's here on Wikipedia. And it's simply called Streamlines, Streak Lines, and Path Lines. And it kind of gives you the, the gist of what's going on. There's some fancy words here in here, such as velocity vector field. Velocity is just simply the speed. The vector field is the direction in which that speed applies. And so what you're looking at here, and there you go. What you're looking at here is these little arrows show you the length equals the speed and the orientation is the direction. What happens when something impinges on water or, or causes it to be redirected is the arrows change. They either get longer or shorter and they, and they change their direction. And they don't change, you know, like 45 degrees, they change in a curve that gently follows one of these streamlines. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, velocity and velocity is a race car going around your stream. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's it for tonight. A uh, quick tip, just jump in there and talk about it a bit. We will be hitting this from time to time because it drives gold and is so crucial to understand and get a feel for as you're looking for gold. It should not snow you, so do not be intimidated by what you just learned. Instead, if you know the why gold moves, you'll know where the gold will go. And that's why we teach you what we do so that we can help you find more gold. That's why we're here. Again, like I said earlier, uh, the, the sponsorship tonight is 2020. Uh, sourdoughminer.com slash 2020. It's the report regarding water flow and gold and where gold moves to. So check it out. Take a look and let me know what you think. So that's it for tonight. Good prospecting and good night. See you tomorrow. Catch you then. Bye-bye.